year of the girl achieved nothing, but it wasn't our fault, okay? According to TikTok, videos of hashtag girlhood have racked up 1.5 billion views in 2023, which is almost a 4,000% increase compared to 2022. But women are not that much closer to actually reclaiming femininity, and here's why. 2023 was the year of girl math, girl dinner, hot girl walks, lazy girl jobs, girl starter packs, trying to get up the courage to emulate tube girl, screaming Olivia Rodrigo, Maisie Peters and Taylor Swift from the top of your lungs as you soak up your tomato girl summer, your rat girl summer, whichever you want. And the economic value of girliness really shot up as brands started to realise that selling girlhood back to women was actually quite the marketing tactic. Taylor Swift became a billionaire with the highest grossing music tour ever and do I even need to mention the Barbie movie? Or it's 101 brand partnerships. But why now? Like, what's driven this girl essence? And has it done anything at all for feminism? Are women just scrolling on TikTok now and realizing, you know, actually, I'd really like to give up all of my agency and my hard earned power and autonomy in favor of going back to the simple life of a girl. What's going on? There was so much commentary about this at the end of 2023, with some people saying that it's a demeaning trend, it's a distraction from the very real issues that women are still facing in the world today, but other people are saying it's a liberation, it's a reclamation of all of these things that we've been told traditionally will get in the way of us being taken seriously or being successful, such as openly liking the colour pink or putting our hair into place and wearing bows in it, you know? I'm just so tired of watching myself and every single other woman tie herself into knots so that people will like us. So is the era of the girl the latest sort of wave of feminism? Is this what this new generation of feminists is going to be characterised by? I think that it has a lot of potential actually but it's not fully able to be realized right now and that's what I'm gonna talk about in this video so let me explain to you why I think that that is. So first came the trend, suddenly everything that is associated with girlhood was all over social media. Bows, cute dresses, listening to and watching the things that we might have considered guilty pleasures before, they suddenly took on a new community of their own, making you feel like it's okay to watch Girl More Girls because it makes you feel cosy, or it's okay to be really invested in the summer I turn pretty. Even if you're decades older than the protagonists and the storyline is just a classic high school American rom-com love triangle. This was the year of reclaiming chick flicks and songs about heartbreak and being young and in love and emotional. All these things that we're told we're not supposed to be as serious grown-ups. But why now? As Isabel Cristo put it in her article for The Cut, the trend makes you ask the question, what is it exactly that's so uninviting about being an adult woman? Well, I think, and many people who are writing about this seem to agree as well, the thing is that women have just had enough. Women in their 20s right now, they've grown up in a society that's massively over-promised and then under-delivered. Being able to buy a house or going through a day without having to think about the debilitating impacts of the climate crisis or having basic reproductive rights. All of these things that we kind of just assumed would work themselves out or we would not have to deal with or things that we assumed that we would just get, we just haven't. And then you're realising that there's things like incels and the manosphere and Andrew Tate completely indoctrinating a whole new generation of young boys into his particular brand of misogyny. Or you realise that your uncle is actually incredibly sexist but you didn't realise it until this one particular Christmas after you took your feminist philosophy module at uni, you know? In 2023 in particular the news was so bleak. Climate disaster, wars, I totally understand why we might want to just escape it all. It's too hard, it's too contradictory, and nobody gives you a medal or says thank you. We're sort of getting to adulthood and then looking around and being like, uh, this is this is not what I signed up for. Let me just let me just rewind and just go back to those good old days when I was just a girl, you know? Emily Firth writes for Elle that, on the surface, one could read this nouveau girl power movement as vapid, edging on the side of ignorant in a year that has been punctuated by suffering. And yet there's something to be said for the kind of art, be it a meme shared or a movie experienced, that embraces another primal urge to replay, even if performatively, a more innocent time. 
one in which we were free from expectation and untouched by responsibility and didn't have to consider anything remotely connected to tax, the rental market, or the depressingly relentless pursuit to achieve, well, anything. We can even spend it on the things that we've considered like guilty pleasures or a bit cringy because society said, oh, that's super feminine, that's not a serious hobby or a serious interest, or if you like it, it's just because it's like chiclet or it's chiclet. Tick. Uh, it's a chick flick or it's chick lit or you know chick things not serious things we can buy those concert tickets for the hundreds of dollars if we really want to well some of us can and then we can go to that concert and we can engage in this beautiful community of mums and daughters and friends and family for a few hours of this nostalgic bliss and yes i am talking about a taylor swift concert we can listen to taylor swift and then go online and be completely validated in that by literally millions of other women who are just as into it as we are solidifying the fact that maybe it's everyone else who's telling us that it's not serious music who are wrong and we can actually enjoy Taylor Swift alongside other bits of serious music. Like it doesn't have to have these black and white consequences for our entire identity. Like, what does it say about me if I really like Taylor Swift? Like literally nothing. You do you. The very word girl has these historical associations that are totally entrenched in sexism. So girls are immature, they're emotional, they are silly, they are supposed to sit prettily and quietly in the corner and only speak when they're spoken to. So the girly trend is also kind of reclaiming that term girl as one of endearment and solidarity with other girls. The return to girldom also seems to be pushing back against this idea of hustle feminism and the idea of the boss babe and constantly having to be smashing the glass ceilings, striving to be the next female CEO of your company. As Olivia Allen writes for Refinery29, while the girl boss ideology encouraged women to emulate the traditional male path to success and prove themselves equal through status and power, girlhood rejects this narrative outright, removing men from the equation entirely. And in this light, embracing girliness becomes more than an aesthetic choice, it evolves into a daily act of protest against the status quo. You know, it's interesting because personally, I never used to wear pink. Like, I remember when I was eight years old, I was invited to a birthday party for a girl and the dress code was that everyone had to wear all pink. We went in this pink limousine. It was incredibly extra for an eight year old's birthday party now that I think about it. But what I really remember and has stuck with me from that is that I didn't have any pink clothes at the time, like none. And uh, my mum didn't have any pink clothes because I don't think she's ever worn pink in her entire life. So we had to go and, and buy some new pink clothes. Because I always considered myself to be, and this was the era of, of High School Musical, right? So I was a big High School Musical fan. and. I always considered myself to be much more of a Gabriella than a Sharpe, and obviously Sharpe was the one that would always wear pink, and Gabriella was like the serious, smarter, more mature one who wasn't like the totally girly girl, and she was still like pretty and everything, but she didn't wear pink, so I wouldn't wear pink. But fast forward a couple of decades, and let me tell you, I love the colour pink now. I love a bright, bold pink, I mean, you can probably tell. <laughs> I think it's such a powerful colour now and reclaiming it has definitely been a part of me sort of growing up and realising that I can wear or like whatever colour I want to like and it doesn't actually mean very much for how successful I'll be or how seriously people will take me. Like yes, it's girlier or it's more feminine but that doesn't need to be like a dirty word. I shouldn't need to behave in a traditionally masculine way to like get to where I want to be in my life. At least that's, you know, how it should work. So girly and powerful and pink, like they're not mutually exclusive. And But I didn't know that when I was eight, obviously. Of course, capitalism is always watching, right? It's just waiting for the next thing to pounce on. So the second that we reached into our cute little bags and took out our cute little purses and started paying for those cute little bows to go in our hair, to reclaim our girlhood and everything girly, it was like, oh, hold on, we can, like we can exploit this, right? We can turn this into a marketing tactic and then we can sell it back to them. But to make it marketable, we need to flatten it. Take all of the nuance and all of the depth and all of the fight out of it. 
because otherwise it's too much to explain. Grey doesn't sell. The multifaceted, complex experiences of womanhood, they just, they don't sell. It needs to be black and white or preferably pink. So you can have the Barbie merch, but like that's all you are then, right? You're just, you're a Barbie girl in a, living in a, a Barbie world. That's all you are, right? Or you can have your hot girl walk accessories, but then that's what you are. You're just a silly little girl who likes to go on silly little walks to make her happy, you know? You can't have behind that a more serious way of thinking about your mental health or your physical health or anything that adds a little bit of colour or extra depth to these trends because they're so aesthetic, surface level, superficial. And that's a slippery slope too because some people have commented that this is only one step removed from like infantilization and the idea that women just want to be like these little girls and men then treating them like that. And then also assuming other things that come with girlhood like being innocent and being obedient. Blech. And so any deeper meaning behind when we say I'm just a girl or time for a hot girl walk is flattened and stripped away in a way that is damaging for feminism and for the acceptance of women in their fullness. Like, instead of the Barbie movie just spurring all of these amazing conversations about feminism and about unrealistic expectations of women in today's society, it got completely taken over by all of these brands that were collaborating with Barbie for these exclusive collections. And so it literally just became another consumerist trend telling you to buy the Barbie merch. Not least of all, fast fashion, which is something that I talk a lot about on this channel. And what doubly sucks about that is when these girl trends are taken over by brands like Pretty Little Thing, they will use their exploitative supply chains to create that merch and then sell it back to you, like in the name of female solidarity. And most of those garment workers are women. So it's totally backwards. Like these systems of consumerism and capitalism will sell back to you something that you can came up with, but in a much shittier, more exploitative, cheaper, flattened, less impactful way. And then that reinforces within you as well that this thing that you identified with is just that, it's just the aesthetics, it's just the trend, it's just superficial and there's nothing underneath it, which may not even be how it started. You've got the t-shirt, you've bought into the trend, you're part of the tribe. You feel validated and so you just move on and then you jump on the next trend whenever it rolls around, probably like the next day. As Eleanor Cavender says for Mashable, while a simple trend like girl dinner might not seem like a call to action, it hints at larger issues faced by women. But when trends like girl dinner are so rapidly adopted by brands, it encourages buying stuff instead of reflection. But women are not just entities to be sold to, to be flattened and to be commodified. There is a big, big difference between the idea of girlhood a la the trends and the reality of being a woman. And consumerism encourages us to forget that and just consume. So do women not want to engage in this deeper discussions? Well, I think it's really hard for them to when the communities where they would do that, which tend to be on social media, when they try and do it on there, brands will spot it a mile away and then just sell it back to them in that flattened consumerist way the next day. This could be a new era of feminism that fiercely centers femininity, contrasting with the one before that seemed to just throw it out the window and bury it deep, deep down as a guilty pleasure in an effort to prove that we can be just as good and just as serious and just as mature and just as powerful as men in their predetermined masculine way of being all these things. And we could have it all just like them. Now there are other inherent issues with the girlhood trend. It's incredibly white, middle-class, rich, conventionally beautiful, which of course means like straight size, able-bodied, but of course that just makes it more marketable. So that then just feeds that cycle and continues to kind of whitewash the trend and make it even more straight size and able-bodied because that's what we see in our marketing and make the trend even more aesthetics based. Essentially, the big commercial powers saw girl trends and thought, let's bottle this up, let's put it in a box and sell it back to them, because boxes are way easier to transport than the misshapen, lumpy realities of 
actual womanhood. And now we get to the real problem. If conversation starters about real feminist issues that women are trying to discuss just get taken over as trends and then sold back to the women that are talking about them, that is completely leaving men out of the equation. So the girl essence thing is just a cute little thing that's just for women. Men will only see the heavily marketed, polished, clean, white, rich, beautiful version of the trend and never have to think about any of the deeper roots of it because they're not in the same social spaces as women are. The algorithms are not going to serve them like more raw or original like girlhood trends or discussions about what girlhood actually is. They're just going to see the commodified flattened trend, right? They might as well just believe that women wanting to return to the state of girlhood is literally just about bows and the colour pink and, and wanting to listen to Taylor Swift rather than the anger and frustration that we feel at the world and the things that we're trying to reclaim. An unexpected place that I found this was actually in Barack Obama's comment section. So every year he does this thing where he shares his favourite songs and films and books of the year. Um, and underneath that post for 2023, there were two types of men, right? So the first group were the ones that commented on something else and didn't bring the fact that Taylor Swift wasn't mentioned into it. So no qualms with you guys. But the second group were the ones that said things like, wow, so glad Taylor Swift isn't mentioned on here. Or like, uh, if you'd mentioned Taylor Swift as one of your favorite artists, um, I think I would have been followed straight away. Like this kind of stuff. Clearly men still do not take Taylor Swift seriously as an artist. No matter how much money she makes, how many magazine covers she's on, how many Grammys she wins, how many tickets she sells, she's still just for the girlies, right? It doesn't matter that she is Spotify's top global artist of the year or that she's the time person of the year. They don't care because she's girly. Be and because she's girly, she doesn't make good music, right? But I mean, who has the power to define good music? You would think that maybe Spotify top global artist could potentially make good music in, in at least some sense of that definition, right? Well, not if only girls listen to it. You can't possibly be grown up and serious and successful and mature and know all of the lyrics to the 10 minute version of All Too Well. But you know what? I would not be surprised if Obama did dabble a little bit in a bit of Taylor Swift now and then. <laughs> That's just my two cents. But hey, I'm just a girl. <laughs>